Hey, welcome back to Her Restored Spirit Podcast. My name is Tammy and I'm your host. And today I'm going to talk about something that we all don't want to talk about. We all know. We are very clear and very aware, but we also don't want to actually admit it. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to sit down and we don't want to, well, we want to avoid this at all costs. We are talking about how we are getting in our own way. Why am I bringing this up? And why am I doing an entire podcast about this instead of just sprinkling it, sprinkling it in here and there? Because this is something that I see so many times. I get the, get the excuse and I have given the excuse. Oh, I'm just so busy. I have so many things going on. Oh, I just, um, see, what are some of them like? I already know what to do. I already know what to do. So I just don't have time to do it. Or I don't know exactly what to do. I I can't do it right. If I can't do it right, not doing it at all. I have too many obligations. I have too many responsibilities. I have, I have, I have, I, I, I. And yes, it is I who is actually getting in the way from you getting what you want. So I wanted to talk about that today. And I wanted to bring some things to your attention that some, some reasons, see, there's some of the reasons and I, and if any of them resonate with you and at one point or another, all of these have resonated with me. Um, these are things that I actively work against. Like these, I, I tell myself when I recognize that I am falling into this trap, I will stop myself. I will ask some key questions and I will get myself moving because I know that these reasons are not actually what I want. These are not actually what I wanna do. These are actually stopping me from having the life that I want, having the business that I want, having the ministry that I want, having the, the family that I want, in having the relationships that I want, having the self-care that I want, having the life that I want. And the more I recognize that it is me. Hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. Like the more now I can realize that it's not my fault, but it is my responsibility. It wasn't put there, but now I get to recognize it and I get to do what it takes to change it. And just let me tell you a little secret. It's not hard. It's not, you don't have to make these big, like I need to add these big habits in, or I need to change these big things. It's small things, small steps, small. I mean, and I say things because honestly, a lot of times it's a different thought that gets you a whole different reaction, a whole different result. And I'll tell you more about that after, but for now, let's talk about some of the ways that we are getting in our own way and what we can do about it. So I'm going to, I have 10, this may be two different podcasts, depending on how long this is. But the first one is we don't actually listen to our thoughts. We don't actually sit down and real and recognize what it is that's stopping us. We assume that it is our schedule, our resources, our money, our, um, our relationships, the responsibilities, the expectations of the world, but we don't actually sit down and pinpoint what it is. So here are some of those things that we can start looking at, asking yourself that maybe will help you pinpoint. We don't take time to listen to ourselves, what our body needs. And, and I, will, I will tell you, this, this whole body keeps score thing is legit. It is something that your body will do. Your body reacts to the way that you, the way you hold things, the way you hold stress, the way you manage life. And to give you an insight of that is I don't feel stressed right now. I mean, I've got a little more stress. I'm actually getting ready. And by the time this airs, I will be on a trip. I will be on a Um, vacation slash like it's got a little work in there too Um, but and I will share more about that later and so getting nine people to where we're going to where we are 
is um, a little, you know, it takes a feat, all right? Yet nine, seven adults and two teenagers. So we are all capable and we are all, we all have ideas of what we want to do. So I'm a little bit of stress that, but it's really traveling relaxes me. So I, I have put a lot of those things down, getting ready for traveling, that is stressful. But over my, over the last 11 years, and honestly, if we want to really rewind, we want to really rewind the story. It is way before my husband deployed that I started managing stress poorly. I am type A. I am an Enneagram one. I um, want to do things right. I used to believe that that's how I got my attention, my love is, um, and having in the, the family we had, like it was rewarded. Yeah, I was rewarded because I didn't say, didn't mess up because I didn't cause trouble because I took care of things on my own. So here I am young and doing these things and I was capable. I, you know, so it's not, I'm not complaining. Dad, if you're listening to this, I'm not complaining about my childhood, but it is what it is. I was, I, the, the, what my brain caught is take care of it, get it done. Don't mess up, be perfect. You, if there's something you can do to improve, do it. Always be learning, never rest. These are things that my brain, part of the reason why I started studying the Enneagram. Um, and so I've, I've grown from that. Fast forward in, you know, out of college, I went into the military. I was 23 and in charge of multi-million dollars worth of equipment, day one, day one. And I didn't know what to do. Um, and luckily I had really good mentors, but still like that's a big responsibility. And that's where that is, you know, as I was moving up the ranks, all of a sudden now, not only was I in charge of equipment, managing that, I also led people. And if if you know people, you know that, and you're, and I'm talking about like 50 plus people and it's stressful because I care so much. One of my strengths is empathy, which is odd because I am very logical, but it also shows it's why I'm a good therapist. It's why I can see things from other people's perspectives. It's what helps me. So I took that on as my responsibility. I took all of these things, and so my body held on to it. Fast forward, and I, we, my husband and I had kids. And then I got out of the military, and I, you know, still taking care of things. Military spouses, you know, it, it's something amazing. It is an amazing and a fulfilling job, but it's also hard. It's, you have support, but you don't. It's your technically not a single parent, but you are. And we run the house so our spouses can take care of their business and not worry about the house when they're gone. Like they need to focus whatever job, they need to focus on that job when they're in the, when they're, they're there. And so fast forward that and then losing my husband. So all of this, I want you to see how responsibility got stronger and stronger. And me who at a very young age took that on as don't burden people, do it right. Make sure it's better than you left it. You can handle this. All of these things started to like the responsibility that I felt grew. It came on me. And I know that many of you, though your the story is not the same, you still have those same you built that same responsibility level. You have created a this world of, I need to take care of all of this. And there's so much evidence that says you do. There's so much evidence. Well, now I, 11 years later, I am in an amazing relationship. I, my kids adore him. We have had, of course, the, as we're blending families, as we're getting to know each other, as we are, um, figuring things out, you know, introducing a man in the house with a teenage boy who's never 
lived with a man in the house is it's a fascinating, fascinating thing. And uh, maybe my maybe my daughter and I one time will do a podcast and talk about the dynamics that we see and how um, they're both managing it. Kyle, my guy, he is definitely managing it better than expected. But it's hard when um, I never uh, I never escalated my son Isaac to the man of the house. I took on that responsibility. But there's still that testosterone thing going on. But anyway, so let me keep, let me keep the story moving, um, so you so I can get to the point. But when we we hold all this stress in, and let me tell you, when I say I manage it well, I did not do it perfectly. We there's many things that fell through the cracks. There's many things that I had to let go. There's many things that I had to ask for help, hire help. Um, so. It, I, I found ways to make things work, right? And so now, as I have a partner who wants to take some of the stress off of me and wants to take some of the burden and does things around the house, like he has helped with gardening and and he's planted me an orchard um, and things like that. He's gotten, he built a chicken coop, like things because I wanted chickens and all of these things. So my body is now revolting. My body now is like, oh, do you ever notice? Okay, so this is something that I know that multiple, many of my friends, multiple of my friends have have experienced this, but things are um, like you're planning a vacation or your kids are about to go to camp or even a, they're going to grandparents for a night, but things have been so stressful and all of a sudden you're looking forward to that. And then when what happens is that when that day comes, and the first time I experienced this, um, my kids were going to a day camp. So they were going to be gone. This is the first time. I, I want to say they were probably maybe eight and six, maybe. So they were going to go to a day camp, it, you know, through the Y, through it's going to be safe. I was not worried about it. I was actually really excited because I would have four hours a day for five days this week that was on my own. And what happened? I had all of these plans that I wanted to do. I wanted to organize. I wanted to watch a movie. I wanted to go and have lunch with my friends. Like I had things to do. My body had a different reaction. I actually got really sick and I got dehydrated of all things, which I drink a lot of water. So it was just odd, but it was my body's way of saying, okay, now that you're holding this much stress, you have a moment to handle you. I'm going to crash you. So you actually rest. So those four hours for the all five days, I pretty much sat in dark silence. Uh, towards the end of it, I would watch movies or whatever, but I didn't get anything done that I wanted to. I sat and I drank a lot of um, a lot of water, some Gatorade, some you know. I, I I had to tend to what my body did. So think about this. Like this is an example of how your body keeps score. So with this. Fast forward now, um, I have, there. I, my stress level is lower. I have more help. I My business is going in a direction that I absolutely, absolutely love and I'm excited about. My kids, we're kind of settling into homeschool, which is not a natural thing for me. And we've been, we've been, and it's not something that they, is natural for them either. Time management's hard when you've never learned it. When self-gratification is what you grow up or instant gratification, which is the world we live in and time and you don't have time management skills and you got to learn those, it's hard. So, so we have a lot of things over the last couple of months, over the last, I would say six months, like I, I can felt my stress level lowering intentionally. I have made some key changes. Um, there are some expectations that I have let go. There's some, you know, that like in internally, I, and now that my kids are older and I've been able to let go of some things, some things that I should have let go of a while ago, some things that I could not let go of until now. So my body is like, you know what? Uh, we have been holding the stress for so long. Now that you're relaxing, now that you're putting things down, let's cause an issue. And so I have actually developed CSR, Central serious retinopathy in both eyes, which basically I have fluid on my retinas. I cannot see clear. 
I can't read. Like I have to put everything. It's, it takes so much energy to focus because I have it in both eyes, which means that my focal points for my eyes are different and neither of them are what my brain is used to. So it just means that I have to slow down. I can't really read. So I have to listen to audio, audible, audio books. That was unusually hard to say. I have to rearrange, like I have to pay attention to when I set things down because it's when you have two focal points, it's well, um, and the way, the way I look at it is like, like when you first put on 3d glasses and your eyes are like, Whoa, what's happening. That's what it's like. That's what it's like. Um, what's weird is this is common in middle-aged men with high powered jobs. Um, so I got the middle age right, but it's the the stress. And of course, what is the fix? Well, I said about 90 days, about halfway done, I, I am, I'm hoping. And the what it is, is they said, you can't stress about it. You have to relax. You have to slow down. You have to stop. Don't try to fight it. When I'm trying to plan a trip, when I am trying to get ahead at work so well, I'm, while I'm gone, I have all the podcasts done and everything. Your body, your body has a different plan for you. So I got off on a little bit of a tangent on this, but how does it play into how are we getting in our own way? Because I didn't stop to ask my body over the course of my life, what do you need? Why, why are you so stressed about this? What part of this is your responsibility and what part is not? What are your thoughts? What are some of the things that you're telling yourself? What was I telling myself while well, I was telling it that I could do it? I was telling myself that I, sure, I'll, I'll take help. I don't want to burden anyone. I'll, I'll pay for help. I'll get the little bit of help when I really need it. But overall, you know, my kids, my responsibility, my house, my responsibility, my life, my responsibility. And I was so, and it wasn't even that I wanted others to think that I had it all together. It's more that I wanted to think I had it all together. Like if that's not crazy as I'm fighting myself. And I know so many times this is what's going on. If you don't know how many somatic issues come from your mental health, how many physical things, whether it's weight gain, whether it's CSR, whether it's um, stomach aches, headaches, um, shoulder aches, I carry all of my stress in my shoulder. So like the times I'm like, Tammy, lower your, like relax. We have to be aware of this. And this, these are how we are getting in, getting in our own way from having the life that we want, seeing these dreams that we have come to life, meeting these goals and these expectations for ourselves. Like we, we don't actually engage our body when we plan these. So that's one of the areas that, that is so important that we do. I want you to think about it and I want you to consider today, like what, what does my body need right now? And one of the things, which is actually down further on the list, because I, I haven't even really started the list. I did one. So the one that's down further is we don't practice self-care. And I want to go even beyond that is we practice self-triage. We put a bandage on a gaping wound. We, we do not put our masks on before we put our kids' masks on or our families or our friends. We tell ourselves we can handle it. One more thing won't kill me. One more time. One more, let me take care of this first, and then I will go and do this. We don't take care of ourselves. We don't practice, and I like to say whole self-care instead of self-care. Because it's more than going to the spa. It's more than getting our nails done. It's more than reading a book. It's, it is looking at every area of our life. Taking a deep breath and saying, okay, where am I in this area? Where do I want to be? And how do I get there? We, we are whole people. 
we are human beings. Who are we being in health, in our relationships, in the community, in our finances, in our, like so many, so many things. So we settle, we settle for the life that we have. We just, we don't have time. We don't have the money. We don't have um, the resources. What else? Like, I don't know what to do. I'm just so tired. I don't even know where to start. Well, if you don't take care of it, your body will. Your body will take care of it and it won't be pleasant. It'll do things like making it so you can't see for 45 or 90 days. Like it's just, why not? Why not add that to, to the plans? And the last one that I'll talk about in this podcast, and then I'm going to, I will record the second part of this, is we settle for mediocrity. We settle for status quo. We settle thinking that this is the best it gets, or this is, I've made my bed, I'll lie in it. That I will, um, when the kids are out of the house, when the kids are driving, when, the, when, 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 then, then, then. If I only had this, then I could have the life that I want. And friend, life is too short to settle for mediocrity. God did not create you and was like, you know, I'll just, I miss everyone else is doing great. They are there. You know, their purposes are on, um, you know, so needed and they're going to impact their families and the world around them. But this girl, this woman, I'm just going to make her like, all right, I'm just going to give her a couple of like, not really strengths. I'm just going to give her some like, like me mediocre things. Like I'm just going to make her um, kind and make people like, like to be around her or something or I'm and but I'm not gonna go overboard with this woman no if God made you it's because you have an impact because you are called to have an extraordinary life I don't think that God wants us to live a mediocre life what I mean we are to we are to work because multiple times in the Bible, you don't work, you don't eat. We are supposed to work onto the Lord. We're supposed to do, we have impact, impact. We are to, we are to keep, store our treasures in heaven. So it's not even about what we get here. And why would he create this? And why would he put us here and I, the one thing that I really, I think that there's enough in the Bible to back up. I mean, we, the one thing that we take with us when we go to heaven is our memories. When the saints sit around and tell stories, these experiences that you have, these memories that you have, because you're going to, you're going to know the people that you're in heaven with. So you're going to be laughing around whatever water hole there is, whatever exciting thing um, I used to believe that heaven was sitting around and just singing hymns for life. And I was like, as I grew older and learned more about the Bible and realized, oh, there's, I mean, honestly, I was looking forward to heaven because we're, we're told to, but it doesn't sound very exciting. But I do think heaven's exciting. And he's given us a glimpse now. He's given us strengths. He's given us, um, he's given us uh, influence. He's given us um, tools, he's, uh, skills, and time, talents, and, and and times, time, talents, and treasures. There we go. Um, he's given us these resources that we have that he asks us to manage. He asks us to do something with. And there are parables that show that if you just sit in mediocrity, it is not what he had intended. Sow those seeds. Sow those seeds. Harvest that, those fruit. Cut off and prune what's not working for you. So many times that these are the things, and like, honestly, if if these three things you start looking at is I don't give myself time to, um, I didn't even write down exactly what I said the first time, but the number one is the listen to our thoughts. Actually look at what is getting in the way. What is our body telling us? Two is not practicing self-care because if you are not whole, how are you going to help other people become whole? Don't practice self-triage. You're so much more 
than just throwing a, a Band-Aid on a gaping wound. If that means a tourniquet for a little while, well, you're tourniquet one area so you can work on another. The key is, is don't give up, don't stop. Start looking at, at, a, at a plan of, okay, how do I need to get whole? And stop settling for mediocrity. There's so many times, there's so much information out here. There's so much. And I am, I truly believe that you actually know what your next steps are. You know what to do. But you keep getting your own way and you don't do it. I kept getting in my own way and I didn't do it. I, that, that guilt, it's that comfortable fear that we don't want to, that we want to be out of but it also, are, we know exactly how to deal with it. We know how to deal with disappointment. We can set ourselves up for that. We can prepare for disappointment. We cannot, um, you know, we can. We can just look at things and know that I'm like, okay, well, that's good for them. But I, that's not something that I can do. That's not me either. That's not, that's not some in the cards for me. Stop it. Stop it. Stop thinking that way. We were called for more. We were called to have a beautiful life. We were called to get excited and have joy. How is that expressing joy? How is that showing, showing people around you that, yeah, life is hard. Nothing in the Bible, nothing in life is easy. Even starting this new relationship, there are areas that are hard. Having two independent people who have been on their own and managing their lives for a long time now we're trying to come together and have a relationship together where we're blended and we both need each other and both are self-sufficient and well we've got a lot of things to work on and it's not easy but it's worth it life is not easy but it's worth it stop settling for mediocrity stop putting a putting a setting aside and pushing aside whole self-care because you don't have time you don't have time not to you cannot afford to continue the way you're going because you are hurting yourself. Do not wait until your body decides that you're going to be sitting on the couch for a couple of days from dehydration, or you've just been going, 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 and that you ha are constantly having headaches. Don't wait until that moment. And I want you to consider right now, like think about it, take five minutes and just ask what physical issues am I having? Do my feet hurt? Do my legs hurt? Am I overweight? Am I underweight? How, am I nourished? Have I gotten the right foods to eat and not just had, you know, leftover kid food, whatever they don't eat or um, whatever we pick through the drive through We've all, like, and that's not, judge, that's not judging you because we all have seasons of that. And we get to intentionally choose a different way. Intentionally choose a different way. And that's, and that is the whole point. Intentionally choose a different way. We get to intentionally decide to get out of our own way. All right. Well, got on a tangent. I hope that some of this resonated with you. I hope that you see that these stories, these things that you have built on, this is not, this, these things that my body's going through now are not things that, that just happened. These are things that my body has been slowly working towards. As I added more and more responsibility and added more stress to myself, believing that I had to do it all when I didn't, and you don't, that I could get help and I can get, I can have accountability and I don't have to, I don't have to do it all and neither do you. I would love to give you a free gift. Five secrets to discovering you. It's on my website. I'll put it in the show notes. It's um, just questions to start, to start asking yourself about what's going on. Where do you want to be? What do you, what do you want? It's areas. It's a way to stop getting in your own way. I would love to share that with you. I would love to. So go to my website or if you, on um, on Facebook or, or Instagram, send me a DM and say, hey, I want I want that thing that you that you stated on uh, the podcast. I want 
those secrets to know how to start getting out of my own way. These questions are ones that they're, they're, they're easy questions to read. But when you give yourself a few moments to really consider it, what it's going to do for you is immeasurable. All right, well, with that, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and choose joy until joy chooses you. And I say this, and someone asked me why I say this, because we fight for things, right? We fight and we choose, we're intentional. And then one day, one day we realize that we have chosen so many times that it's natural, that it happens around us, that we get to experience it and not only fight for it. And that's why I say choose joy until joy chooses you. Because one day I realized, and I was talking with my a mentor of mine, and she asked how I was choosing it. And I, it was one of it was this conversation. She's like, do you think it just finally started choosing you instead of, and I was like, oh my goodness, yes. Like it was just, it happened naturally now over a couple of years. And it's so good to get to a place where good things happen even in the trials, even in the struggles, because my life is still a struggle. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I am still fighting my natural tendencies to procrastinate and to not, um, and I'm still fighting getting out of my own way. And I get to choose joy and joy gets to just show up around my life now. And I want that for you too. All right. With that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and see you next week. Bye.